Good evening, my local drones. It is I, Bio Gundam, and I am back again for another video. So today we're going to be doing Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc Five. Uh, no, not Arc, not Arc Five. Sorry, Yu-Gi-Oh! Five D. Yeah, hold on electric, a minute. <laughs> electric Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo Two Point uh, today I have my buddy Kaiser and Heisenberg, I mean Periog Pete, uh, introduce yourselves. I am the one who knocks. And I make, uh, and I make, uh, dozens of videos, uh, shitting on a lesbian ship for fun. <laughs> yeah, you also, make, no. like, you also make videos uh, uh, about Ruby, Panry yeah. the lowest common denominator. <laughs> Giving yourself some Ruby. credit there, there, Kaiser. We, we all know how you really f no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, considering that he liked uh, Frenin, you know, a show uh, so racist it makes uh, people racist. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, the most mm -hmm. racist anime. The most yeah. racist anime. <laughs> it is the is the, the the North Star of the KKK. Yeah, the only way that show could possibly be more racist if it, it was if it had a uh, fantasy dwarves in it. True. True. <laughs> we can have then we can have free run hating on both demons and dwarves. You mean orcs, right? Like dwarves are a thing in free. Oh, are they? Orcs. Oh shit! Yes, oh right, I they are. Oh god damn it! Right, one of the members <laughs> of the fucking. Sorry, I was, I was thinking of like some kind of like Gimli joke, like I will be dead before the ring falls into the hand of an elf, kind of like thing, because dwarves and elves always fucking at it. But like, yeah, I guess that doesn't work with free run since dwarves actually are a thing. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, that joke just fell apart. Wait, um, wait, wait. But anyway, Shit, yes, and they, I'm being um, recorded too, so yeah. everyone fucking saw that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all, it's <laughs> we all can recorded. Everyone's post. gonna see it uh, anyway. So uh, this video is gonna be a little different. We're gonna probably maybe talk a little bit about the other seasons of Hugo Five Bs, but probably not much in depth because uh, it's not like nothing much happens. The problem is that like we kind of covered most of that in the previous video. But uh, we are going to be focusing on probably the best filler arc of all of you go period. Um, and that's going to be Crash Town. Which um, is probably one of the best filler arcs in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. And probably has a ver and it's actually has a pretty good redemption story for a former an antagonist for the ships for the series. Um, Kellen Kess Kessler or Kiryu as he's known in the sub. Mm. Oh my god, I forgot they that they called him Kellen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't be the first character that they changed the name of. I mean, true, I but I, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I just forgot that that. Oh yeah, like I'm not. Him. It's still weird, but it's also four <laughs> kids. Yeah, that's, that's four kids, man. Yeah. Uh, so now, before we get into like the Crash Town arc, I just wanted to like we're not gonna uh, before we go before we cover the Crash Town arc. I just want to ask mm. you guys, just in general, um, what do you guys think of like the other couple of seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> you know, Five Ds after the point we covered? Because um. I, I have some thoughts, but I, I just want to get your guys' opinions as well. I have not had a chance to rewatch those parts after Crash Town just yet. Um, I know it's all building up to the big tournament arc thing that's going to happen for this season, so it's going to be interesting to look into that. But I've heard mixed things about the latter portions of the series, particularly from CBF, co-hosts of the New Types podcast. Um, Link in the description. But yeah. <laughs> Sponsor! Yeah, we are spot. Oh, wait. I'm getting sponsored by the New Types. Oh, my lucky day. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I will say, uh, just on my opinions, if we ever come back to you go five these after Crash Town, um, I will say that, like, while I do enjoy, like, the car, like, the Slice of Life episode stuff, like, I think it's pretty fun. Like, the uh, episode mm -hmm. where, like, you say takes Aki on a not a not a day even like yeah the know that exactly one was fun on. they, they, yeah. like, like there are some like really fun episodes in the and in, in these like in these in the next sec, in the second half of you go five days but the then you is... have some not so great ones like the one where like jack gets framed and we have to retread on development that he already had <laughs> before <laughs> Yes. Oh, and like, yeah, but like, uh, another one of my favorite episodes of that was like Jack trying to find a job. That was like funny as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. anyway, uh, my main issue with like kind of like the, the the second half of Ego Five Days is it's not really much for the characters to do. Like, yes, it's cool to see them in a new. Like, it's cool to have like them doing like casual stuff, which I think is yeah. fine. It definitely like helps flesh them out and characterize them, right? But as far as, like, interesting drama stuff going on, nothing much is really going on. And, you know, Eki... If there does... were less... If there were less of the episodes, it'd probably be better. Like Yeah, like, I, like... I think they could have really, like, trimmed down the episode list. Yeah. What yeah, maybe. Thinking? Yeah. I, again, I'm also someone who hasn't really watched it recently, so I'm going mostly off of memory. That, that's fine. Um, that's fine. But like, that's fine. if I'm going to be perfectly honest, 
I, and this is also coming from someone who's probably watched the second half about as much as I had the first half before we started doing these podcasts. I remember so much less about the second half of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's uh, kind of a blur, isn't it? Bees. Yeah, kind of. Like, so there was something about, like, uh, time travel, I think? Or, like, there was a guy who was, yeah. like, the antagonist who was also, like, really old and also not old and also a kid. And they steal synchros, I think. Um, also, a, a Kiza in a jumpsuit was not something I expected five uh, or sorry four kids to um actually put in an episode i was i was genuinely, genuinely surprised when <laughs> oh, i saw they them do that in? yes they did oh, i think so in. yeah they like they probably like removed some of the the cleavage but i mean just I the mean, whole yeah. her, oh, right. the yeah, episode yeah but like the episode they, they of her a full film body suit and you're like damn yeah and like the thing is because like i remember watching i watched the sub before the dub of the second half was even announced as nice. a kid and then like when i rewatched it later when they did dub it i was like Wow, they actually did it. I mean, they covered up the cleavage, but they actually did it. That's like the only, and that's like the only thing that really sticks out to me the I most mean, about the second half. Like legit, that is just the fact that oh yeah, Aki in a jump awakening by seeing an anime <laughs> character in a in a fucking jumpsuit. He's like, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, come well, on, no, it's a guy. No, it's not just an anime character in a jumpsuit. It's an anime character in a jumpsuit in a four kids dub. <laughs> How the right, ha- come on, how gosh, do they get away 16, with this in a okay. Christian country? <laughs> Oh damn! Yeah, yeah like this is coming from like the same guys who would remove out. entire like chunks of an episode just so that they, uh, just so that they didn't have to show like, um, uh, you say getting beat up when he was uh, in that prison once. Oh yeah, oh, they, of course. I figured they removed yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sure there's other stuff. Oh, but they they kept the part in where like he's beating up on two security guards. They did. Yeah. Fuck they the did police keep getting that. down in the neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I'm going to say that. Yeah, oh, can't... <laughs> yeah, can't, Kaiser, can't show have... Yusei getting beat up, but we can show Randos getting beat up by Yusei. <laughs> four kids logic, my friends. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Damn, four um... kids was a cab? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but basically, like, outside of a, a couple of, like, episodes... There's nothing much really interesting going on. I mean, I I, I have very mixed falls to like the time trial plot thing. I thought the ending episodes of Yukio Five Vs as a whole was pretty fucking cool. I mean, they're fighting each other on flying motorcycles, dude, with golden wings and fucking yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all just fun stuff. Yeah. Anyway, now let's get to the Crash Town arc, which is uh, as we've been hyping it up for a bit. It's probably the most fun. It's probably like the best filler arc in all of Yu Gi Oh! Uh, in, in Yu Gi Oh! Five Leagues. Actually, probably all of Yu Gi Oh! Actually, like I don't, I don't think I mean, there's many filler arcs that actually top this. It's a fucking western of all things. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I did not. I did not think that they would really like go in that in such a direction. Um, but it has a yeah. very interesting start. The only thing, honestly, I don't really have all that much of an issue with the arc as a whole. I think it's really cool. Um, maybe could have been paced a tiny bit better, but that's about it. The only other issue is, is that like, um, well, I guess I wouldn't really count it as an issue. It was gnawing at my head about like, okay, so are like all the dark signers brought back, or is it just Killian and? <laughs> I, I think and, it's all. Them Carly. because I think I remember reading a wiki page that like a keyser and like uh I think it's Misty or something like now pen pals or something like that. Yeah, Misty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, girlfriend, right, remember well, I tried to kill you? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's actually a fucking. If you, don't, if you don't hear us play like Dragon Age Origins, there's actually like a dialogue quote you can say to Logan when he asked you, Why did you forgive me and let me join your party? And you said, to him, Oh, don't worry. Most of my best friends have tried to kill me at one point. <laughs> he just pulls a Goku. He's all like, Yeah, everybody wanted to kill me at one point. It's fine. Yeah. Like, and this yeah, well, is in the context just, They brought me back with like, the Dragon Balls. Ass- yeah. Like, this is in the context of like, if you ever played Dragon Age Origins, where you have a fucking assassin who tried to kill you. And could actually potentially try and betray and kill you if you don't like, you know, um, you know, have good rapport with him. And uh, you know, a couple of other pe- characters who tried to kill you that you end up becoming friends with. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's actually. I wish they had that in some of the other future Dra- um, Dragon Age games, where it's like, oh yeah, more enemies that try, more party members who tried to kill you, and then become like fucking lifelong yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that remember would be that really time cool. I tried to stab you in the neck? I know. Good times. <laughs> Those good times. Good yeah, time. like, you have, like, those kinds of stories where you have that one guy who has just, like, fought with the main character so long that it's just become, like, an, an ordinary thing. Like, that one scene yes. from uh, the um, Sonic Boom cartoon. 
Uh, I'm gonna kick you in the next week, Eggman. I'm busy next week. I mean, I can I can reschedule if you want. <laughs> it's just they yeah. play it off like <laughs> arch nemesis, but they played off more like Perry the Platypus and Doctor Doofenshmirtz. Doctor Doofenshmirtz. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta true. get back. What's important here? We gotta get back the card games in a western because they're not yeah. on motorcycles that much in this arc all right so who wants to do like the summary the backstory of this uh or i guess like as m much of a backstory as like you can i guess it's more uh, so about like, I guess either. like yeah. How, uh, yeah just summarizing the arc basically yeah so um as far as like the background of it this whole uh this the crash town arc takes place in a place called crash town who would have guessed i know um, yeah, i know shocking right <laughs> Uh, what, and also, but, interesting fact about like Crash Town is actually they, they this is the place where they this is one of the places where they mine a mineral I think they use for door wheels or door discs. Yeah. So yeah, it, 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 like yeah. gold. I love it's, it's, gold. It's fool's gold. <laughs> it's fool's gold. <laughs> Don't tell them that. You guys have been killing each other over this shit. Yeah, Don't tell them it's not real. <laughs> yeah. The gold was the friendships that we made along the way. The gold was the exactly. corpses that we left along the way. <laughs> Okay, I've got to keep it. Yeah, yeah, you saw all those fucking, uh, all those fucking grave sites? Jesus Christ. That's yeah, a lot of busy. people to die for some friendship, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did they, how did they, I don't even know how they did this in freaking Four Kids. I, I have I think if my, uh, memory serves me, uh, I don't think they censored mo mo much of this actually. They may have, like, toned down a little bit what? of, like, the cleavage for, like, the femme fatale type, but I think they kept most of the shit in. Yeah. Did they keep to... the, the fact that Kiryu wants to fucking die? Yes. I oh my so. god. They, they... They probably just kept it as, like, he just wants to go to the mine forever because, like, that's what he deserved. I wouldn't know because I've not fucking seen it in forever, but, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I feel like they could get away with, like, tombstones and just the implication. Because, yeah. like, they've had stuff like that before, like, in the, the One Piece dub where um, Arlong, instead of being like, oh, yeah, I killed your mom, Nami. Instead, it was like, yeah, I sent her to a mine for the rest of her life. Or, no, like, she went to rot in a prison cell for the rest of her life or some shit like that so like they could totally get away with that being like oh yeah, yeah. you're gonna get sentenced to uh i'm digging a mine for the rest of your life i feel like four kids could get away with that but anyways so the the main dealio here is that uh after the place was uh the place was mainly founded by these two different gangs i forget what they're called uh and the two of them basically the are kind of yeah, the blood, yeah, this, this, the reds this all, and the blues. Yeah, this all goes back to like the the glory. East side and west side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, I actually once watched a documentary about like the difference between like east side and west coast rappers. It's actually like quite like interesting history. Mm, there is, but yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep we'll, team we'll blue eyes that. and team dark magician. True. Okay. <laughs> call, let's call him that for the rest of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, does anyone actually remember the names of the family? No, I don't. No. <laughs> 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 was crash down that no I'm, I'm not even gonna make that joke um but uh yeah so like these two guys these two families are in kind of a very shaky kind of hold over the uh the town that basically runs the mines and they've been vying over control of it for a while and so they hire a bunch of mercenaries essentially to to duel one another uh as a way of deciding um like I basically of a way to both fight each other and also as a way to like supply workers in the mine because if you lose then you get sent off to the mine where you will work tirelessly for the rest of your life and if right. you win you get a cut with the the rest of the family but you got to keep dueling so don't lose thing, yeah an interesting about this is that all dual disc and crash down so the way it works is is that the dual discs are gun transformed from guns <laughs> like you and the way it works is is that you gotta freaking pull out the gun and you got basically you gotta draw yeah. faster than your opponent you gotta to get, get some exactly. to get down that quick draw. Draw, draw. literally draw, yeah. draw your hand, draw it high noon, boy. Draw your last pathetic card. <laughs> All right, fuck. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm fucking you American. Why can't I do a fucking Western accent? Why you can't you do a Western accent? Draw your last. Oh, Yugi Moto. 
Draw your last pathetic. I keep going into like an Australian accent for some draw, god draw your last pathetic It's because Bio's here. He's infecting you with He's his in... awesome beer. No! The I'm Australian is affecting me! I'm from New Zealand, you cocksucker. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, same difference. Same difference. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> hey, if it if it makes you feel any better, I'm. Wait, no, shit. I don't know if I want to say where, where I live. I feel like I'd get yeah. judged for it. <laughs> Is it California? Uh, no, L but L it might be just it. as it might be <laughs> just as well. No, I guess it's not as bad. I don't know. Is it Detroit? <laughs> no, no. All right, no. I'm a. F <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I know. I just, right, we'll cut that in post. We'll cut that in post. <laughs> so like Crash Town, it's like you got fucking people using cowboy guns as dual disc, and that's just fucking it's cool great. shit. Yeah. It's so silly, but like it's the JoJo's kind of silly where like yeah, it's like it kind of works. Just... <laughs> like, even you say exactly. gets into it. Like his dual, he even has a gun dual disc as well, and he also wears a poncho as well and a cowboy hat. Like you know, he's just gonna I mean... fit in. You, like, you're watching Yu-Gi-Oh! You're watching a, a show about people saving the world with the power of a children's card game. Like, this is- like, that kind of silliness is what you signed up. And, you know, just, just go with it. And, like, it works! This is the main thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the, the two families are fighting with one another, um, and it's been kind of a stalemate for a long time. Yusei was called in by, uh, someone who lives in the town because a friend of his, uh, happens to be working for and dueling for one of these families. And it turns out to be, if somebody else wants to continue while I do the drum roll. Uh, and it is, it is our boy, Kiryu. He is back. Uh, playing a harmonica with a bass fucking sound. Soundtrack and an awesome fuck off yep. coat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I want his Absolutely. fucking coat. <laughs> yeah, his <laughs> coat. You know what? I, literally, like, dude, I can't believe how how consistent this is something i've noticed with different shows and movies and stuff is that whenever whenever you want to make your character design better uh and 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 you're updating a pre-existing character design how you make it better -er, you give them a jacket <laughs> also make them have longer hair too does he have longer yes, hair he does he does, he does. Okay. we got check marks all across the board trench coat yeah and longer hair all right i thought it was around the same as when he was a dark signer but yeah no right. i mean yeah he had a bit of a so... mullet as a dark so like i think he had a little bit of a mullet but like his hair is like way long if you look some of this fan up he'll draw them like he mm, gotcha. he just like shows up and this dude just like fucking oozes style <laughs> yeah but, but he also oozes depression which yeah. brings us to why you say it gets brought here he gets brought yeah. here because Kiryu is in this town and he has been winning pretty much all of his duels single-handedly day in and day out um in crash town for the blue eyes family let's call him but uh, the problem, the, the thing is, though, is that Kiryu is severely depressed. I mean, I imagine that dying and coming back again wouldn't be a great process for anybody, but that's just me. Yeah, didn't me. he, like, fucking starve um, to death in prison uh, in, in despair? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a great way to go. Yeah. yeah, the dude died twice and is now back, and after doing so many horrible things, especially to his friends, the man literally said, I am here just to die. I am here to duel until I... <laughs> I get beaten by someone and get thrown into the freaking mountains where I can spend the rest of my days just slaving away for what I did. Yeah, and, and it's actually like quite which, interesting because I don't. Oh my like, god! Which, which is and quite dark for a Yu-Gi-Oh show. And also, I don't think like um uh if you guys can correct me, but I don't think many Yu-Gi-Oh shows actually take the time to do like a redemption arc for uh, a, a, a former like minor or major antagonist like this um not like not this. to this degree no nowhere near yeah. no i can't and, and think, I think it like for I, most other I, cases for most other cases you'll have like a character who's maybe been like mind controlled by some dark force or entity or they're or like a like minor that, antagonist yeah. or they're an yeah. antagonist in a way that they're, it's sort of like a rival thing and not actually like doing yeah anything severely wrong yeah. yeah like they're not even a dragon ball z villain that then becomes like a good guy later on. They are just straight up, yeah. just like a one-off yeah. kind of what, what, what one episode villain and then like, become a good What's like. interesting about this arc, right? It kind of tackles the issue of like Kiryu's character arc where he realizes that like, yeah, he did go too far and that he had his friends for no good reason because he thought they, they, you know, as we went back in the show, right? He thought that Yusei and the others betrayed him, but it turns out they were trying to save him. And, you know, he was right. just too blinded by ambition 
to see that. And now, like, you have this character who is this very confident kind of Chad character who's been basically just been hollowed out. And even though, and, and even despite how, like, fucking cool he is, he's almost like a shell of his former self. Like, he's not, he's yep. not evil Kiryu, he's not dark side of Kiryu, he's not even the Kiryu that they remember. He's like this no. almost melancholic, He is dark, the husk of a man. Hu yeah, husk of the person he once was. And I don't know, that's like, it, it kind of reminds think... me of some of the stuff that happened in like, say, Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, or some of this like, kind of more psychological right. shit. I think the, a line that was said during this arc that really exemplifies this is, I think, Kiryu's, uh, during, I think during Kiryu's duel with Yusei, and I think he said, said something along the lines of, you know, I I, do, I don't have I don't have the will to duel anymore. The the cards have a mind of their own. I'm just playing them. You know, the the I don't even have the will to win anymore. I'm just going to duel until I die. And I'm all like, holy shit! Th that is, I mean, it's appropriate given what he's been through. But god damn, the fact that they actually go there just shows how great the writing of the show can be. Yeah, and, and also, I think this like, also all... like feeds into how how horrible the Dark Sire transformation is because it takes the things that you already feel inside yourself and sort of pollutes it, corrupts it into something else. Right, because fact of the matter is, you could say, uh, "Oh, you know, well, well, Kiryu, you know, he, uh, it wasn't Kiryu's fault, you know, like it's it's all right, well, Rick." I mean, like, I mean, guys, he offered, like he's like he was offered power and a moment of weakness. Yeah. Like, like, listen, a voice called out to him, and he said yes. Yeah, and I and I guess it's it, you can kind of say that, like, yeah, it's not like he had but to an extent you know he was already on this path because of the level of agency that he had up to making that decision and even in a way w when he made that decision because there's no reason to believe that any of that shit would work out like mm. fact of the matter is he did hurt people and he did do the wrong thing and this is his way of his him trying to redeem himself and it's so cool and stark the way that they do it um but yeah yusei is here he teams up with this uh Dark this uh, uh, gang. Uh, uh, yeah the dark magician yeah. gang acting as a sort of like you know a hired gun basically so that he can dual cure you and get him out of there um however it turns out shocking twist the femme fatale that uh said that she was uh with kiryu who sent you say the letter she was in in on it with the blue eyes gang the whole time Ba -ba -bum. The, femme fatale, the femme fatale was an actual femme fatale. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> yeah. Actually, sorry, it was the Dark Magician gang. My bad. It was the Dark Magician gang that made her do that. But yeah. So because of that, after like dueling Kiryu, both Kiryu and uh, Yusei get, get thrown into, into the, the mountain. And the rest of the arc yeah. is just them trying to get out. Yeah. And the leader of the Blue Eyes gang gets thrown in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Which honestly is kind of a little like the world building i don't know if i want to talk about like just no, the general no, Cole, go. Yeah, because the i'm a little because I, I like a lot of the character stuff i like a lot of just the conflict here um it's just i feel like it could be better if the world building was just a little bit better as to because i feel like it's not quite emphasized the kind of seriousness that this is because we're talking about two gangs that are fighting over uh, this, you know, entire mine full of gold, and they are content with just fighting each other just with card games. They have like, they're <laughs> like, okay, we will adhere to these rules. We will do this. We're not just gonna bust out guns and start killing each other because they could. They <laughs> they have guns in this. I mean, shotguns. Yeah, gun, granted, shot granted gun, but like, yeah, they have those shock. <laughs> Yeah, but they have guns. They could just like straight up go full on Western, and it's it's cocky. I could almost I could almost buy that like they just had this system that they had like this very shaky peace with one another, but they were still ultimately willing to abide by like these rules because it benefited both of them, even if it still had a lot of risk for the people dueling. When you start to throw in one of the leaders, because like you gotta understand, like even with gangs in real life. Mm -hmm. A lot of gangs in real life are pretty messed up, but if there's one thing that a lot of gangs have is like loyalty to one another yeah. because you know you have a lot of like outcasts a lot of people who you know feel like they finally belong someplace and that seems to be kind of what is implied here because we actually meet another character later who was 
uh, kind of came here because of his own busted up life and wanted to try to make something of it and then ended up ruining yeah. it in the process. So when, when you show that like, but apparently like there isn't enough loyalty for like the entire wise gang to be like, you know what? Fuck this. We're actually like going to go straight up gung ho. If you're going to take our leader, cause we're not going <laughs> to like the whole place would fall apart if they are going to throw leaders in there along with it, because you'd have entire people who have followed these people uh, the for, you know, it'd who be, knows how long. organized, right? Exactly. Yeah. It would, like, and this isn't even talking about, like, the people who are running the mine itself. Who is running the mine, by the way? Because you would assume it would be, uh, like, 50-50 between, like, each family, right? It yeah, wouldn't I just be was, one. I thought it was 50-50. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I do know they send the losers down there to the mine and all, and, and, what, all, and, and uh, whatever else un unfortunate chump fucks the family over, you know. Exactly. The salt mines, yeah. kiddo. So what happens right. when, like, the, the Blue Eyes gang, who runs the Blue Eyes side of the mountain, finds out that their leader was just thrown into the mountains? They're fucking rioting! Like, this place is falling apart immediately! And it's it's one of those kinds of things where, like, you know, there are silly aspects of Yu-Gi-Oh! where I'm like, yeah, sure, I guess I can buy that, like, this can be settled with a children's card game. Like, especially if it's in a tournament, you know, kind of setting. There are other times when I feel like you got to be very careful with how you kind of present the card games with other kinds of things. Because I could totally believe that they had a setup like this. They hired mercenaries to basically, you know, combat one another in this way that was peaceful but still very aggressive with one another and still, you know, had like very high stakes. It was once they threw the leader in the mountain that I was like, this would not work in like any kind of, this just, it just I mean, didn't make sense about, like, to the me. Gang shit, right? I was watching this interview of this guy who was like a mm. former like crip in LA and he talks mm. about how like in some neighborhoods you'll have like bloods or like local crips or bloods that'll have like a peace treaty mm. with one another because they're on like they're on the borders of each other's neighborhoods essentially because um mm, yeah. it's not like they're friends or homies right it's just going like all right this is like a no conflict zone like no violence and we'll just keep it like you stick to your side of the fence and you stick to mine but you know that thing gets right. fucked when you know <laughs> you start shit yeah yeah like it does. once and, but, but, uh, but um, no go ahead i will say though that thanks to this bit of contrivance we do get a lot of good in terms of uh you say and cure you like gang out of the mind you say being another you know another dose of why he's probably the smartest of all Yu-Gi-Oh protagonists mm -hmm. uh just breaking out of the prison and get that cool shot that cool moment of you say and cure you just at the grave sites outside of the freaking mines of all of these different all of these people who have died inside the mines and lost their duels their dual guns all just around them and Kiryu just giving up mm -hmm. on everything, accepting that this is his fate. And after Yusei just drags him out of it, freaking one of the dual disc guns glows and says that in, you know, basically em emphasizing that it's not his time yet. He can still move on. He can still fight to live his life. Yeah, because that's the thing about Kiryu is he's almost like given into the spear of nihilism, essentially. Like, he's he's given into the spear of nihilism, which actually makes sense. I mean, he had his ambitions crushed, and, yeah. like, you know, Kiryu is someone who, like, basically lost it all. He got a little bit of it back, but then he realized, like, what what did I get gain from this? Like, yeah, yeah. I forgave you, I, I forgave you saying shit, like, they realized it wasn't his fault, but, like, he realizes yeah. that, like, oh my god, all this was my fault. Like, I'm the reason why yeah. the, um, you know, team satisfaction broke apart. That was me, not them. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, and I also tried to help a bunch of uh, lunatics try to take over the world, but but yeah, I betrayed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, it puts that entire fit scene in the context where it's like, no, they didn't betray me. I betrayed them. Like, I betrayed what I stood mm, yes. for. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was trying. I was projecting onto them because I messed up my own life, and they and they were the people who were trying to save it to save me. But all yeah. of that shit and it makes sense why he's actions. given in despair because like his whole like worldview yeah. has been like yeah. flipped on its head. And now we get to like the third, the final part of like Crash Town. Where you say uh, goes for a showdown to the new boss of Crash Town, oh. and who also oh no wait, actually we, if oh, if I could say one more thing yeah. about what All I liked right, about uh, Kiryu's redemption is that because there's another character or another oh, yeah, set of characters ass. that we've yeah, kind of kids. neglected to talk about. I forgot yeah. about the so the right. kids who you think are like just some pretty normal people, uh, like just some neat little side characters. Yeah, the boy who especially kids. is kind of like uh, kind of attached to uh, Kiryu, who's kind of like uh, he 
admires him. He thinks he's a really cool right. duelist. And apparently, I think he's also heard of his, like he has heard of legends of his uh, past as part of Team Satisfaction. I don't remember right. if that was something that he had heard of before or not. But yeah, um, he, he did say that. I, I'm not yeah. sure how though. But like, he, yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. Since it's that like was in the satellite, I mean, but, did, you know. I mean, he did blow up a fucking police station. I mean, you know, they could have gone out like. <laughs> oh, fair. Yeah, but okay, it was so, in satellite though. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Actually, maybe that kid might have. Uh, maybe it's not great to idolize actually you know that might actually be like part of the reason all the more why kiryu doesn't i mean maybe they, really i mean he's the thing with people like, well, actually now that i think about it, a lot of quite a few of the people in that town do have like you know criminal marks so some of those people may have been from yeah. the satellite yeah probably yeah like maybe the kid like did hear about him from that time that he fucking killed a bunch of officers <laughs> and it's like yeah that's cool <laughs> murdering police <laughs> but anyway oh, so the, the average hassan fan <laughs> right, but yeah. uh but yeah so um but it turns out that uh their father was someone who used to work for one of the families i don't remember which one it might have been uh team blue eyes who was thrown right. into the mountains and he's gonna work there for the rest of his life and then when yeah. you say and here you get thrown in there they meet up with this guy and as they're uh, going through this big mine shaft escape, uh, mine carts riding all this stuff, um, yep. the dad ends up sacrificing himself in order to flip a switch to allow them to escape. Guy falls yeah, to his saving... death. Yeah, I'm all like, number one, I really love his and Kiryu's interactions with one another. Th those were fan-fucking-tastic. I didn't think that yeah. they were going to do that much with this guy, but he really helped put a lot of things into perspective because... He is also someone who just felt like he just made a big mistake and is just paying for it. But he wants to help his kids. He wants to go back to his kids. And then he just freaking dies protecting yeah. Kiryu and his and his family. And yeah. I'm all and I'm all like, holy shit. And and they didn't they didn't cheap out on it either. He's he is deaded. He's dead dead. He ain't coming back. And, and good and better for it too, because like yeah. a, a, something that I really like about uh, Kiryu deciding to like reform and basically, you know, coming it's, into it's himself. It has some grit to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's that, but also it's because like he, even he has to realize how fucking irresponsible and cowardly it would be for him to still want to give up on life. When this man yeah. fucking saved his life and his children are now orphans. I mean, they yeah. kind of technically already were, but like now they are like permanently. And, yeah. you know, he's not even going to stay behind to you know, uh, take care of them care in of the them. town. Like, especially the kid who admires him. Mm -hmm. Like that be, even he knows that would be a really dick move on his part. Not to realize that, like not to repay that that much generosity from a guy who saved their lives um right. and like it, it really just helps that much more like bring him into the like it helps facilitate that kind of change and it's just really it's cool. really really good and especially when we get to his epiphany right before the final part of the arc where we just hear masaki endo killing it on the freaking mic <laughs> you say always playing in the background ending that episode such a great song and such mm. a great way to put it so then, can we talk about some of the duels or do uh want, yeah we can talk about uh, some of the duels further. you guys can go ahead before we go to the final one but yeah sure continue um i i, I don't want to talk too much for this one because i got D and D stuff and i need to say my voice oh yeah fair you, you oh yeah that, that's fine yeah, yeah so, so um the main one that i liked was just the duel between yusei and kiryu and because i right um i like it when duels can actually incorporate the emotional conflict between the characters in the duel itself it's part of the reason it's why great. the the uh, uh akiza duels Aki, yeah yeah akia yeah, i think fight. i, I forgot I, I, yeah, for well Aki it's akiza in the dub it's aki in the sub yeah right aki um and like it's part of the reasons why like those kinds of duels are so great it's part of the reason why you know you say and jack dueling are you know so great and yeah. it's part of the reason why i'm a little less invested in some of the other duels with this fairly generic kind of stock standard you know villainy kind of guy yeah. just wants to take over the town become rich and you're you know 
standard kind of femme fatale. And I mean, like, they service their parts. It's just, I'm not too interested in the duels it, with it, them. Compared to, yeah, in, in, aside from that, like, compared to a lot of the interesting uh, uh, villains and stakes that happened in the previous arc, they are kind of weak in terms of being objects to facilitate, uh, especially Kiryu's development. I think they serve their purpose as well um mm. I, I i do also really like kiryu and yusei's duel like it's it's so good we get to see kiryu just utilize his deck in a different way than he did before also yeah. quickly speaking right before i watched this art so there's this guy i think his name is Yu-Gi-Oh. everything yes Wait, i've what, seen what his you... videos he makes a good stuff um shout out to the actually no not Yu-Gi-Oh. everything um it's uh freaking something anime uh he he's a he's a guy who breaks down like Yu-Gi-Oh. duels is it tgs anime or something like, like that TGS AMA, yes. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he, he makes some good a, stuff. Uh, link in the description. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, check out his stuff uh, as if he needs any help, endorsement from us, really. But <laughs> still. So he does this thing where he goes through different duels in Yu-Gi-Oh! And breaks down the different plays that happen. And if, like, certain plays could be made differently f so that the other character who lost could, could have won. Um, and he's actually helped change my mind about a lot of the duels that I thought were fair or the ones I thought were bullshit. Um, needless to say, pretty much almost every single 5D's duel is downright solid um, in terms of just, you know, having little to no misplays or anything like that. And right before we, w I watched this arc, he released one of his newest videos, which is him breaking down uh, You Say just... OTK the three guys during <laughs> this arc in just one turn. He just turns this shit around. Let me give y'all the play by play real quick. Basically, the, the like in order to, you say in order to get initiated in the Dark Magician Club, um, he ha he has to beat these three guys all at once, right? And all of them have to somehow somehow got has have the same cards the same deck and the exact same play which is basically just i summon a monster and then we do burn damage all right um and then in one turn like you say just turns it around completely because if he didn't win that turn he would have been done but it is so freaking funny and cool that he actually managed to do that just so well <laughs> it's all you all using i think Except for one card, he's using all all the cards that he used during that duel were all cards that he used before. Yeah, he just kind of caught yeah. like a lucky break. It, it was it was just a yeah, funny but also really cool way of doing that. Yeah, he didn't yeah. break thankfully. <laughs> I feel like a lot of it, it, it's interesting. It is cool when Yu-Gi-Oh episodes show off characters doing OTKs, um, because yeah. there's usually like a, a little bit of like a complexity behind the combo. They're not usually something that is really like feasible or like realistically viable in uh, like real decks. But it's cool right. to see them like try to pull off like these kinds of creative OTKs with these kinds of cards and such um, right. when they attempt them. And I mean, I'm not gonna knock Yu-Gi-Oh for like a lack of realism with the actual game i could but i mean i mean this is a world where Look, like you can summon dude. like um aztec ghost by sacrificing the souls of the dead or some shit like that so you know don't well i wasn't that. even talking about that i just meant like things like how in some duels you will have you know characters use like a card that would be really impractical in any other kind of situation except the one that they just so happen to just use this moment. one in yeah. just this one it just so happens to be the exact one I yeah. need. I put in. Oh. That I decided to put in this very day. Oh, I just so happened to lose all my life points. Good thing I have this monster that like keeps me playing after uh, that happens. Yeah, he's like a god of death. <laughs> like it's cool. I I'll give him that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, let's just yeah, say they cure really you cool this song. entire arc just oozes style. The harmonica, the theme, the long hair, the yeah. trench coat that that flows in the breeze. Like, he just oozes fucking style. I'm like, why he the does. fuck couldn't he? Why yeah. could the fuck could this guy be in the fucking world tournament? <laughs> <laughs> like, this fucking... guy, I mean, <laughs> this guy, this guy stole the show, really. Yeah. 
Uh, like, I kind of wish that Kiryu was in Team 5Ds for the tournament. Like, you know, he can look after the kids while he at the tournament. And he, like, this dude just shows up and a fucking cowboy and harmonica to the tournament. <laughs> and he <laughs> comes in blowing in. And he introduces himself as, I'm the god of death. <laughs> oh my god. I am death. Destroy of <laughs> like, destroyer of yeah, card exactly. games. <laughs> yes. Destroyer of cards. <laughs> Oh my fucking god. You know what? I, I'm getting into creative writing. I should maybe make like a Yu-Gi-Oh! fan fiction where like a 5D version where Kel and Kessler is like on the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D teams. And he just like starts <laughs> quoting Oppenheimer and shit. Yeah. Dude, I'd watch it. Like, of card games. Yeah. I would. You gotta let me know like if you if you write out like any uh, duels based on like duels that you play out yourself or something like that because mm. I would love to watch like a Yu-Gi-Oh or just any kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh story that really feels like the characters are using like a lot more I I, I don't want to make it sound like <laughs> using sensible kind of like tactics that people yeah. would use it like it is the funny thing like I, I do have yeah. like uh, plans I think it does like I, I think do... for the most part in regards to 5Ds it does do that really well yeah or at least most of the time yeah, I just wanted to mention, but, like, yeah. uh, I'll mention this later, but I, I have been, like, I'm not working on it right now, but I have had the, had the idea of running, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh! themed, like, tabletop game. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's, I'd be curious, uh, I, I'd be curious to know how that works, like, so, um, would people actually use Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, or, like, would it be kind of like a dice roller, and, like, the, the cards would kind of be, like, um, li like, would it be, like, in any other kind of, like, RPG, the, the cards themselves are, like, maybe items, and you have maybe a chance. Fetch. I was gonna think of doing it, I, I okay. have found a good system for it, like I'd have to find like a system to make it work, but I have had the idea of running like a Yu-Gi-Oh theme, like a Yu-Gi-Oh RPG game because I've seen people do it before. Like... Yeah, you should um you should look up Gloomhaven because that's an RPG that uses exclusively cards, and like it's not a deck builder, but I imagine that like you could probably uh. You could make like an offshoot of that that could be considered like a. Well, I wanted, to, could, I, I like, wanted to be like an RPG game, but like in a world yeah. where things are solved by card games. Like I'd have like an in law reason for why that is for the most part. Yeah. Well, yeah, but like the you would want like cards to also be the mechanical yeah. the point that I was making, I assume. Yeah. And and that's the thing is that like Gloomhaven, there's no dice. It's it's all done with. No, the reason why I want I dice is for like skills like you know like persuasion oh, really? or running or hiding or stuff. Oh, like I that. see. Yeah. 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 But well, like, Gloomhaven. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd have to see, like, what... Because I know that Gloomhaven actually is releasing their own, Give me a like, second. full role-playing game, so, but I don't know what that would look like. Oh, shit! Uh, uh hey, hey, chat! Sorry, Kaiser my, and Bio so, both sorry, banned my, me. my oh. fucking mother just walked in. She's like, oh, oh okay. Like, <laughs> I like it. But, yeah, I have had, like, an idea for that. Uh, like, basically, there would be, like, you know, there would be, like, fist fighting and maybe weapons and maybe, like, gun skills, but, like, most serious conflicts are solved by a card game, essentially. Like, I'd, I'd come up with, like, a reason for it. Yeah, but uh, but basically the idea I was going was like like yeah, violence does exist. You know, people using guns and shit like that. But like, but most conflicts in the world are solved using card games. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'd have like there's like magical powers, like psychic duelists and shit like that. All they can make the card games real, like the monsters real, which kind of make like certain weapons kind of obsolete. You know, why use have a you... nuclear? Why use Oppenheimer when you can use the blue eyes white dragon to annihilate a city? <laughs> have you heard of um well i guess if you're using Yu-Gi-Oh specifically i guess you couldn't um mm. I, I guess you couldn't that would like if you wanted to use Yu-Gi-Oh specifically like i guess that wouldn't really leave a whole lot of room for like changing a lot like that isn't already in the i was gonna recommend um if you if you had heard of another show about uh, a card game called chaotic which i had I I've heard of it. I've never seen it, but I do remember like. Uh... I don't remember if it was good. I remembered liking the concept because it blends the idea of a world with card games and also like supernatural aspects very well. The idea is that like there is this secondary world where people can go to to play card games. Think of it kind of like a, a pseudo online world, but it's not really like online. Oh, it's, like, I thought it was like reality. one of the. 30 people that remember <laughs> chaotic and it, it's yeah, cool I because chaotic. like I remember okay so, it just never comes up too much because no one talks about it yeah it, it's cool because the card games are still treated as like just card games it's never like the fate of the world depends on a card game but like sometimes it does but like it is still a card game in context so like for example there's like an episode where because like the thing is they travel to and from this world where they play the card games and then the world that the card game is based on with like all the monsters and people that are like in the card game where they can like scan 
objects and characters and they can add those people to their decks and shit. And the cool. cool and like the cool thing about that is that like when they actually fight each other, they become those characters and they actually fight as them. And so like there there was this one episode where a character is trying to help uh, a monster in like the real world named Kaor, who's like trying to fight this other guy who is like rebelling against his kingdom. And so this character is like, okay, I will play as you in this game and I will play against someone playing as this guy who you are planning on fighting and I will help you strategize in this fight against him. And it's like, oh, wow. it's a card game, like in context, it is just a card game yeah. between these two guys, but like it's in service of helping this supernatural kind of being. And like, it's interesting how they blend the two in a way that I've not seen in any other kind of card oh, game before I mean, I, I, or I mean, since. I, yeah, I'll have to check that in the future, but like mm -hmm. an idea I was thinking of it for like the card game is like taking ideas from like maybe Persona and like SMT to make it work. Like you go to this bullshit dimension that makes the car, like I'll find some way. Like this is like in the rough idea stages. Spe speaking of that, uh, I, I made a poll for like a group I'm in where I'm playing running like an RPG gamers. Uh, currently so far, the SMT game is like RPG gamers, like in the lead. Yeah. No one wanted, the, the to, do, four... no one, no one okay. wanted to do like the CIA versus the World of Darkness, uh, sadly. <laughs> the the <laughs> four worlds of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! Earth the shadow realm the spirit world and the bullshit dimension <laughs> yes the bullshit dimension. everyone's favorite uh, i'll talk about like yeah. the games i was running like in the future but yeah going back to crash town um i'm just gonna say that like the duel where like you know you saying kira was great because you just see kira and he's just depressed as fuck like just you don't no words need to be yeah. spoken he is just like i just so much great just cinematography and this fucking like anymore. the cinematography and just the way how they convey things without even saying shit without even saying it yeah. it's just great like i mean we're really underselling how fucking cool kiryu looks and some uh fan artists also do um a pretty good job of like showcasing how fucking cool this guy looks like it listen is. from anyone making a new a okay from anyone okay for anyone doing their own anime or stuff like that take some pages out of this fucking character design like it's fucking fire <laughs> trench yeah. coats long hair white hair mark on the face I mean, <laughs> a monica i mean that's belts. how they managed to improve you know the first common writer's design <laughs> what did Ano say to make him cooler oh give him a jacket <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's funny so i'm like in a sh i'm in like in the server where uh what's what like server that's like dedicated to like the the translation of the like not like the novel for shiki and i was just kind of talking about how like mm. the main character i was talking about how like the what? main character looks better with this fucking like coat and like i was talking about how like um i was going into some aspects of certain character designs about how like i think just coats make a lot of characters better and I used, like, a, one of the examples yeah. I brought up was, like, Vash the Stampede from Trigun. I mean, if you take away, yes. like, the fucking coat, I don't think he looks as cool. I mean, he, his outfit without the jacket still looks cool, but I don't think, yeah, I agree, it's not as cool as with yeah, the jacket. Yeah, without the coat Keep or the, the jacket glasses, like, I think, Vash. like, the, like, like they're, they're, and I was just talking about, like, how, uh, you know, maybe there's, like, something in the, 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 uh, unconscious, subconscious, the primordial suit, like, uh, like an ancestral <laughs> memory, that, like, there was some really cool dude who wore a fucking coat, and now everyone collectively thinks that coats are cool. Or maybe it's because, like, you know, uh, humans find certain shapes more appealing than others. I don't know. But I, I was going yeah. into sort of, like, the metaphysical ideas of, like, why coats, for the most part, make most characters look yeah. cool. I, I think of that one Life Arrow <laughs> skit where Leon is fighting for for his coat. You, lo you lose this next fight, Leon, they're gonna take your drip. You can't let them take your what? jacket, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You, you. you cannot lose this duel. Why? Because they'll send me to the mountain? No, they're gonna steal your drip, man! Oh my god. He like suddenly decides I need to live <laughs> just off of that. I want to live! Yeah. I it's mean, like, dude, I, I, would, no... I wouldn't quite. If I found his coat or something similar to that in real life, like, I'd fucking wear that shit all the time. Yeah. Yeah. He, he like comes to the duel, he's like, I'm ready to die. And the guy is like, okay. Well, be pre be prepared to lose so that I can be sent to the mountain. No, I'm gonna steal your coat. You fucking asshole! Just like OTKs him immediately. Yeah. Don't touch the coat. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly wants to live. Stands Suddenly over the guy like before he gets sent off to the mountain. He's like, never give, touch give the coat. Give, yeah, give a guy a cool coat that cures his depression instantly. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, uh, jokes aside, because um, going on for we're going on almost an hour. Yeah. So the uh, the final duel, the final tag team between uh, you say um, you say Kiryu and the leader of the Dark Magician Gang. I think his name was Loken yeah. or Loden or something. It's, well, I it's... think it was Logan. Yeah, something spoke with Al. Um, 
uh, the final duel um, is great. Like, Kiryu shows up, you know, sun in the background, playing a harmonica, um, his coat and hair flowing in the fucking, in the density breeze. Um, and he shows yeah. up and says, I am the destroyer of what I am, death. I am the destroyer <laughs> of card games. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like this like, guy was really okay. You guys okay. go into it. I'm, I'm I'm finished. But like come to take the, your soul. I, I, yeah, the, the introduction I, yeah. I was, was I was all like this guy. Fight. Yeah, yeah. This guy was pretty freaking formidable. Like he 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 was giving these two a whole lot of trouble. I mean, you have to. But like well, like you know, how, if he like, wasn't like just threatening or intimidating, a duelist, make a but he's just like a guy. Yeah, but I mean, that is true. But like he's also just a guy. Also, I love how, like, they were initially threatening the children. Um, because, yeah, that's the logic. Yeah, then they have them, like, do. tied up to a cross or something like that. And, like, a yeah. chick's, like, flipping a whip, like, cracking that whip. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Kiryu and, uh, do you say working together was really good? I think the only weakness of the arc, now I think about it, is that we don't get to see Kiryu interacting with the kids all that much. Yeah, you know I mean? it's really just like, kind of like I that. Can, I can kind of understand to an extent. I, I, I just don't think why, they had enough time, uh, man. I don't think that, like, I, I'm not forgiving it, but, like, mm. they may have not had enough time for it. Probably not. And especially given how apparently this seems like this arc was made during the time uh, that they were making... Uh, Bonds Beyond Time, you know, the first you know, yeah. crossover between... Yeah. The by the way, which is canon, yeah. by the way, that crossover is canon because they reference Paradox and, like, the show. Really? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of oh. like, uh, like, it's kind of like a, like, don't look and you'll miss it, but there's, like, a few times they actually reference Paradox in the show. <laughs> Like the actual the actual five D's anime, like they actually reference him. Interesting. Right. I did not know that. So it's well, the more canon. you know. Yeah, it's canon, by the way. <laughs> the protagonist. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! Yeah. My great 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 grandfather Dots would be so proud. <laughs> Good. But like, oh. it's, it's like anyway, the duel is so fucking cool, and the main villain, like the villain for this arc, is pretty competent. Like he basically OTKs like ah uh, fucking Kiryu. But guess what? Kiryu is a god of death, and he is able to keep on dueling even though his life points are zero. Yeah, yeah. Good thing he had that in his hand. Yeah, good thing too. Yeah, or else he was done. Also, just yeah. love the fact that the card and its effect is emphasized as a freaking ru basically a, a roulette where he forces the opponent to make a choice, and, and depending on what card that he draws, like the the monster just shoots the guy in the head. Yeah, yeah and I love like drawing what he's drawing phase. It's like, oh, I've forgotten how many cards I have, how many spells and traps I have, how many monsters. Oh well. Gee, yeah, I don't yeah. know, man. I I think it's cool too. Actually, you know what? That was one thing I did like about final duel was that it there's a lot of like mind fuckery you... going on like curious playing well yeah and like yeah. it was it's important too because like that mind fuckery it, it shows the difference between kiryu and this guy who has been like he hasn't even been a character until after his duel with yusei and like i feel i always felt like him uh backing down against that challenge when uh kiryu you know had that that first roulette was that was showing his cowardice, basically. That this is the kind of guy who I mean, he's kind of being you know, lit around by the femme fatale as well. So he's kind of like a weak character. Like he's a, he's a weak guy. Yeah, like he is the kind of guy you know w is not like he can duel, but you can tell he's the kind of person who will not be a part of things unless he thinks that he can win. Yeah, and, um, like, and like here's even the thing, compared to like someone like Kira, you or you say like. Yeah, this guy's good, right. but is he like you say with Kyrie Kyrie of good? Yeah. Just before yeah, the like, listen, guys, like he, he listen, okay? It's card games over hoes. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ride till you die. <laughs> Ride till you die. But, like, he even man tries to be like, no, nah, we're he even tries to be like, no, nah, we're not finishing this duel. I'm just gonna have my guys shoot you and th that'll be done with it. You know, the same guys who I said I do not give a shit about and I will send them all to the mountain just because it benefits me and there's no one left to... Because, you know, that that's how you keep a gang together is you tell all the people you're leading that you'll stab them in the back because it benefits them or benefits yeah. you. Um, we'll talk about and then also tries to run away before the is yeah. finished. And, like, <laughs> it, sh 
it shows kind of like so i think for one thing it, it highlights his cowardice but i also think it highlights um Kiryu's bravery and like it is not like him doing this this is not like him being suicidal in him anymore this is him like now no. standing up in yeah, a way doing, and he's doing the right thing now he's like you exactly know what? he's, not, he's he not fighting for nihilism or despair he is fighting for a brighter future and yeah you know, yeah he's he is Heimer. he is dipping he is like treading the line between life and death, but he ultimately wants to live. Mm. Which honestly, like, uh, just talking about like his new deck, like I like how like his Infinity monsters are a bit more like I like some of the new Western themed things, and they're kind of like less dark yeah. now. Yeah. Like it's almost like the yeah, hope that comes really, from the spear. Really okay, yeah, exactly. continue about the duel. And then, uh, I'll have you guys continue. Yeah, and then um, then the the cop, then the cops come up and uh, they gotta stop the whole duel, which. That was another thing about, like, the world building that I was a little bit iffy on, was just the fact that, like, all these people are marked. So, like, technically, all these people are on uh, the radar of the of sector security, I'm assuming. Yeah. Be and like obviously they're not going to be monitoring everyone every second of the day so like sector security isn't going to know that they're doing these highly illegal like slavery operations just to get gold in a uh, in a mine like when they do it this frequently out in the open it's weird that they don't think that someone might let loose to someone like might you know, I, I think the reason why they found out is because, like you say, told them, well, Jack and Crow were actually coming by his backup. I, well, yeah, but like that's right. that's the thing though is that they are doing this stuff out in the open. They're being open about the fact that they are sending people away as slaves in the the mountains. I feel like if anyone uh, happened to get word to Sector Security, these guys are done because all of them can be tracked. All their asses can be tracked by Sector yeah. Security. <laughs> if like. If someone at Sector Security finds out, even just a little bit, they're all fucked. The, without the Discord chats are leaked. <laughs> exactly. Oh, <laughs> oh man. But yeah, the, yeah, but okay, yeah, that is that is very fair. You know what? That's probably why they didn't in you know do the whole freaking shootout thing. Um, even though they probably could have, because think about it this way, you know, they're basically committing slavery here. Oh, so yeah. Like, I, I, could ex I think I if, could if, excuse uh, that if they just kept it more like under the table kind of thing. Like if the right. whole duels deciding thing I mean, would I, I, I think it's also not... kind of implied that maybe some people who do know about it, like the authorities are like letting it like under the rug because of like, you know, because they're digging up stuff for like dual discs and dual bikes and all sorts of like, you know, there's fucking money flowing out yeah. of this town yeah oh yeah i i, I mean, just I, think I, what... I mean you i mean you, you what you say is fear right but i could also see there's probably make maybe some corrupt people and the authorities who do know about the stuff but aren't saying anything yeah. because it benefits them i mean you know it's not like people in authority yeah, can't could, be bribed it's not like that ever happens yeah either. that is also true sure it's I a think very it... far off town as well I think it's just pushing their luck. Like, I can understand that, like, okay, I think I can believe that they've been doing it for, like, a long time. I think it's still very silly that they want, like, the whole reason why any of this kind of happened in the first place is, well, I mean, you say, if we're going to assume that you say contacted someone and that they came along, I, even then, I still feel like this is something that they should have seen coming. Um, even if it was something that they got away from, uh, with for, like, a long time, uh, but it is a stretch. It's a stretch. It, like, yeah, it, 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 yeah. There are worse things with the with the world building. It's just a bit of a stretch. Um, yeah, like the whole thing with throwing leaders into the the um, and just the management of the mine. How that's divvied up between the two families. I feel like that's more confusing than that. It's just a little bit hard to believe, but not impossible, I suppose. Um, and the uh, before we finish up our thoughts on Crash Town, I just love like how like fucking Joe, like how jack and crow show up again and it's almost like you know you yeah get the, the last second <laughs> yeah the yeah. last second to save the day and it's almost like um you know the uh team satisfaction electric boogaloo round two mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah the bros are back in town the boys are back, the in town. Are back in town <laughs> and i'm still wondering like after this arc why the fuck didn't kiryu just come with them to join like the tournament it would have been great man it would have been like team satisfaction <laughs> but, but, you know it'd been like team satisfaction electric boogaloo watch they fucking wreck shop because yeah yeah like and also kiryu is such a cool like because he's a thing it's not like it wouldn't work because kiryu already has like such a, a, a bond and relationship with Jack, with you saying Crow, it's not like he—it's not like he couldn't fit in. Mm. And also, isn't it cool to have a former enemy be a friend and be more relevant than the plot? 
Yeah, but I feel like he just wants to do this as a way to like rebuild his life, you know. Yeah, which I think is like fine. I can understand. I feel I I think the biggest issue, at least something that I've noticed from how people talk about the latter parts of 5Ds is that there are t so many characters that are already underutilized. Kill Kiryu has a natural end to his arc. Yeah. Right? And we leave so we leave him alone. But you watch, I think certain it's characters yeah, but certain characters that should have gotten more things, like, dur um, what was it, as the story went on, just don't really get them. No. And I feel that, like, freaking throwing in Kiryu into the mix would have just made things even worse. I mean, honestly, he probably would just, like, steal the show, honestly. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> they gotta find ways to nerf him, because he's too good. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I just think it's cool of him becoming, like, the new sheriff of this town, and he's like, you know, you know, this is the new life he's built for himself. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I imagine Kiryu being the guy who, like, shows up um, to help out uh, his friends, and the bad guys are like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna play- are you gonna challenge us to a children's card game? And he's like, oh, haven't you heard? I'm the guy who killed a- I'm, a, I'm the guy who killed a bunch of police officers in a children's <laughs> card game, right? No, just <laughs> proceeds to beat the shit out of them in front of you, say Jack and Crow. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> That'd be so fucking funny. <laughs> you say's looking at him being like, okay, Kiryu, I think it's time for another redemption. Yeah, buddy. yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think uh yeah. you've been satisfied enough, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Never anyway. <laughs> Um, so just the ending force, but like, yeah, I think Crash Town is a great, like, filler arc, because not only is it like, like, it doesn't really feel like filler, like, it actually, like, what's great about Crash Town is it really feel like filler, like, it feels like, like, the completion of an arc, and like, plot, um, like, tying up some loose plot threads of like, you know, with Kiryu and Team Satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially for this yeah. character in particular. Yeah, I think this is great. The, um, dialogue isn't, uh, what was it? Can be a little bit weak in some places. And like I said, I wish we'd gotten more of Kiryu's interactions with the denizens of this town. Yeah, but more in terms of with his satisfaction as well. Uh, yeah, but in terms of his overall development, just self-contained in this arc, in, in terms of style, in terms of theming, and, and especially in terms of set pieces... This is some of the strongest the show has had, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. Like, it's it's like I know I know we're taking this this game this anime a bit too seriously, but like it's stuff like this that's why I really like Yu-Gi-Oh. It's stuff yeah. like this, like this redemption story, the story of friendship and love, and all this stuff. Like, this is some of the reasons why I like Yu-Gi-Oh. And you know, people who want to like yo know, take a page out of you like I mean take like you know any future Yu-Gi-Oh installments. Take a page from You Go 5Ds. Take a page from Crash Town. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're trying to make like a much more serious installment, because I understand that things like Yu Gi Oh Sevens have their place, right? I mean, like, uh, I saw quite a bit of Sevens. It's actually pretty decent. I mean, here's the um, thing. I'll be honest. Yeah. Like those types of shows aren't really my thing. Like I prefer the more like serious Yu Gi Ohs. But like you know. Those you go still have those places. You know, I, I may not... It's like with certain Digimon shows. Like, I don't like Digimon Fusion. I don't exactly hold right. Digimon Data Store. Yeah, I mean, respect. to be fair, who the fuck likes Digimon Fusion? <laughs> it, it, okay, it has, like, a few cool moments, but, like, those few cool moments don't make up for, like, the, like, menagerie of slop you have to go through. And the yeah. Digimon Adventure It's like remake. Digimon Junk Food. Yeah, and Digimon oh, yeah. Adventure don't, the Remake. Don't get me started with the remake. Oh, fuck Don't that. get me started. <laughs> I hate that fuck show. <laughs> Okay, All we'll right, talk... check out the Jacked podcast on Celtic Phoenix's channel. <laughs> it's like a tradition in almost every stream. We shit all over that fucking remake at least once. Okay, hey, guys, I don't, so don't want to ask, but, like, uh, if you guys, if you and Celtic Phoenix or something, like, ever, like, covered, um, like, Digimon or something like that, like, uh, maybe, uh, could I maybe invite it on or something like that? Because I have a lot of things to say about Digimon. I mean, I, I don't think he would mind all that much. Uh, we just need to get to it because we got a bunch of other shit playing. <laughs> okay, well, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to push for that. But if you guys ever like talk about like Yu Gi Oh or something like that, uh, I'd be like, oh, Digimon, yeah. I'm happy, I'm happy to jump in. But like, I don't want to push yeah, for totally. this because because it's kind of like your thing, and I don't want to feel like I'm like piggybacking off your shit. Yeah, no problem. Speaking of piggybacking, uh, I guess we should plug our stuff. <laughs> but, but oh so yeah, before we before here. we plug our shit, um, 
So, like, okay. uh, what would you guys rate Crash Town just in isolation? Like, ignoring that it's part of Ego 5 these. What would you rate this in isolation, like, this story arc in isolation? Because I'm giving it, like, uh, I'm thinking maybe, like, a 7 out of 10. Yeah, it, it's a strong 6 to a light 7 for me. Yeah, I think, I think I'd give it a 6. Pretty strong 6. Yeah. And, you know, future writers, take notes from Crash Town. Absolutely. Mm, and, 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 and what's also uh, great about it is that like yeah, it's dual redemption. monsters fistful of dollars yeah. That's what this and what, yeah and what's great about it is like yeah it's a redemption story but it doesn't like it's not like over edgy or melodramatic about it it's just about a guy who's hollowed out trying to find purpose again like it's um it kind of reminds me of like Persona 3 in a way like where you got the main protagonist who's like emo right. and like I don't care like it kind of reminds me of that kind of style of storytelling where it's like the actions speak louder than words yeah yeah I think that works really well for it so yeah give it a shot yeah it is if you, episodes, don't, if you don't like you go five it, 86 to 92 oh sorry repeat that i talked over you repeat yourself no i was saying that like uh, if you if you guys want to check it out it's episodes 86 to 92 i believe I'll, i will link it down, i will link the episode count down the description but like yeah come on people watch watch crash town if, if the three of us not gushing over it isn't convincing enough <laughs> then at least the pictures <laughs> i'm gonna be linking the video of kiryu in a fucking trench coat will convince you of how fucking cool this <laughs> yes. motherfucker is <laughs> this trench coat will become your new religion <laughs> <laughs> fucking coat so bad God, Lone Crew will be jealous with us uh, just talk gushing over coats without him. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, here's the thing. CBF, is, I, I am inviting CBF when we were doing, like, GX, which may be, like, maybe the end of, like, this year or next year. But, like, um... All right. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Um, That's fine. Just because, like, I like Yu-Gi-Oh!, I'm just not as much into the anime as I, I used to. Yeah, like, fine. maybe, yeah, maybe individual, like, classic arcs, stuff like that. But yeah, I, I'm bigger into the game than I am in the anime. Yeah, and I've got to, I'm I've got to into, get back into the which is fair. game, actually. I've got to get back into the game. It's been a while. I need, I need to get back in the game. Like, I played it a couple times relatively recently. You gotta and get your update game my on. Blackwing deck. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta get my game on. And I, I um, updated my Blackwings deck, and ooh. shit has changed so much. <laughs> Kaiser yeah, playing the thing meta, with me I is like, I, I like to use, like, OTK decks, so... <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I, I picked up um I picked up Link Evolutions a little while. I've been playing through that. Oh, um, I, I, I actually have that. I've, I've got to play for it some more, but, like, yeah. um, like I really got to get back to the card game, because I still fucking collect the card I still collect the cards and shit like that. It's just, like... It's been a couple of years, and like the meta is just oh, fucking yeah. crazy. If it wasn't already, yeah, before. yeah, I, I, I pretty much really, I don't use pendulums, um, or anything that like really kind of came out after that. I'm, I'm fine I don't with like really use pendulums that. in my decks. Like I may use links from it, like depending on the, like I've got a few ideas for like decks I want to melt build, but like yeah. um. I don't really particularly like you. I like I, I think pendulums are cool. I just think it like overcomplicates shit. Yeah, it can. Um, I think I played. Uh, what was it? If if you yeah, say performer played, pals, uh, I'm gonna the... fucking ban you from the server. <laughs> no, 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 no. I played I performer never... pals. No, I, oh, I, I have no I, idea. I, 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 yeah. Friendship over. Oh my god. So you I know I, never... I run Grave Keepers. I've said that before. Yeah. I will never be caught dead playing fucking Performer Pals. Are you serious? <laughs> okay, if you if you play Jesus Performer Christ. Pals, I'm gonna shoot you in the head, quite literally. <laughs> in, in Minecraft. In Minecraft. In Minecraft. You better run, boy. <laughs> I mean we're not even recording anymore, right? Oh wait, oh, oh fuck, the, we are uh, recording shit. Oh cut the oh, <laughs> <laughs> Like that's how you end the episode? Yes.